I know that I said this video wouldn't include any thanks, however, this one took me a lot longer to do than it should have. So let's get to it. Mario Levike, Polka Junkie, Matthew Woodburn, SRP Vegas, and Roger Schiffler. To those that I missed with this video, I will make sure to thank you in Thursday's video. As always, thank you for your support, and thank everyone for watching. Welcome to Heaven Awaits. If this is your first time checking this channel out, I'm glad to have you here. My name is Lee, and I narrate the near-death experiences of those who have died and have seen the other side. My videos are meant to bring hope to a sometimes hopeless world and to show people that there is indeed life after death. If you enjoy these videos, please consider hitting the thumbs up, subscribe, and bell icons to be notified of new content. Doing so is free, and it does help the channel grow. To my return viewers, welcome back. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and enjoy today's narration. I have three new experiences for everyone today. Our first story involves a gentleman who died after forgetting to breathe during a sleep apnea spell. Our second experience, I'm not sure if it is actually an NDE, and our third experience involves a mother who began to bleed out after the birth of her daughter. She was able to will herself back to her body. I suffer from sleep apnea. Momentarily, I'll stop breathing for a few seconds and then gasp for breath. My wife of 18 years has related this to me many times. This time I must have forgotten to breathe. I also have very vivid dreams in color about flying like a bird and ordinary life experiences, not of this life, but another in the past or the future. I can't be sure. I dreamed I was driving a car and crashed. I could feel myself slipping away. My sight faded to black. Then I saw my body lying on my bed as if I were floating above the bed. I became aware I was surrounded by the blue sky and a feeling of complete relaxation without any fears. There was a rope I was following that looked to be made out of long strands of hair twisted together. I think I was moving up as I could see the rope stretching into the distance above me to a brighter light and below me to darkness. After a while, I could see what seemed to be the edge of a city in the distance, and I could hear voices calling to me. I came up to a figure who was standing beside my rope path. He had long dark hair, curly at the ends, and a full beard on his face. He was dressed in a purple robe, or coat with trousers or pants, flared out at the ends of the sleeves and pant legs. His clothes looked to be edged in ornate gold embroidery, and he was surrounded by a large halo of soft light. He was holding a large and very old-looking book and was smiling at me. He opened the book about halfway though and moved his fingers down the page like he was looking for a name. Then he spoke to me, saying that I was there much too soon and that I should go back, but he would see me in a while. He didn't say my name though, as if he knew exactly who I was, and we'd been friends a long time. I followed the rope back to the darkness. Then I could see the earth below me, the same way it would look to someone in space, I think, with the clouds, oceans, and land masses. I followed the rope right into my bedroom and re-entered my body, weird feeling. That's when I woke up and jumped out of bed, shaking and covered with a cold sweat. Do I believe in an afterlife? Completely. I now think that we occupy our bodies here on this plane of existence and will be all going to a far better place when we leave this life. I don't believe in the idea that there's a hell, I think this is something the churches dreamed up a long time ago in order to keep people in line and to always have a captive audience that would and does support them. That may seem like blasphemy to many religious people, but I don't really care, not anymore. I know where I was and where I'll be going in a while and I'm no longer afraid of death. Death is merely a step to a higher plane of existence for the spirit. And when my time does come to pass, I will welcome it because that's when I'll be able to enter that great city in the sky. Thank you for having a place to tell this. That does it for our first experience. Let's get right into our second experience. I had bronchitis, which my parents thought was a very bad cold. I remember being on the couch in the living room. Later on that evening, my parents put me to bed, but I don't remember getting there. During the night, my mother came to check on me. I remember her shaking me. I was barely breathing. 
Then I remember being in the car for a moment, and then I was in the hospital. I was out of my body in the corner of the room, looking down at the doctors and myself. They were all running around me frantically. I remember shouting and people moving fast. But there I was above it all, and it was peaceful and interesting more than scary. I was wondering what was going on. While floating there, there was something behind me. Not so much a person, but maybe a void or a strange warmth. It's the kind of warmth that you get from a heat lamp. If you're right in it, it's warm. But if you're just outside, it is cold again. I couldn't even go to a house that had a dog or cat without taking medication beforehand. But as I promised, if I found a hurt animal, it came home with me. If it had fur or feathers, it couldn't come in the house, but we always made a warm home for it in the garage. My poor mom even helped me set up a tank for a bunch of baby snakes I found. The mother had just been run over by a car. The babies were squished out, still in their birth sacks. I got them out and put them in my pocket to bring home. My love for animals continued. I took every medication known and even did years of painful allergy shots. I would get welts four inches, across from the shots. I got through college with a major in animal science. It wasn't easy. When I got out, I took a job with a vet and then with a pet shop. I was having two or three asthma attacks a night. My doctor advised get a new job or get a coffin. I was on my way to a doozy of an attack. I got a new, non-animal job. My allergies have gotten better through the years, and so has medication. Cats can still kill me though, cut my air right off. But I do have dogs at the moment. But anything that has come my way and needed help has gotten it. It's a vow I feel compelled to keep. That does it for our second experience. Let's get into the third and final experience. In August 1964, my daughter had just been born. I began bleeding and lost three pints of blood, which the midwife had just been weighing and had left the room. As I was lying there, I started to leave my body. I floated above the bed, gradually seeing my body growing smaller and smaller. I kept on looking at it as though I was viewing the inside of a doll's house with the roof off. There was darkness all around me, no white lights and tunnels, just blackness. When my body on the bed was a speck, it was as though I realized what was happening and I told myself that it was not my time to go, and just as I thought this, I whooshed straight down into my body. I was never given a blood transfusion, and it took nearly two weeks before I was strong enough to walk. Two years later, I had a son in the hospital and was given a drug to stop me from hemorrhaging again, and 17 months after that I had another son, again, in the hospital. My daughter has since had two daughters of her own, but five years ago contracted meningitis, was in a semi-coma for a month, and experienced the same NDE, but hers was slightly different from mine. I didn't know that I had, had an NDE till a long time later, but always knew something had stopped me from dying. That does it for our final experience, and yes, I know a lot of you are going to comment and say that the second experience did not seem like an NDE, and I'm in agreement, however, the IANS website says it was, which is why I posted it. Anyway, I look forward to hearing everyone's comments on the experiences. Until the next video, stay safe, be blessed, and I will see you again.